Hey, this is Mikey with another After Effects tutorial. Today we're going to be putting live action footage onto an environment map. So here I am. I've got, I'm just recording with my iPhone, and what we have here is this crazy GoPro rig. I actually couldn't find the little case that this goes in to mount it to our, our uh, stand here. So what I have instead. <laughs> a couple of clamps. How this works is we have two videos. One video filming the action what's going on and one video that's filming the reflection and that's what this GoPro is going to be doing. It's also a super wide angle so you don't have to it, it helps with the the spherical uh, mapping of it. Okay so his Brian he's gonna be taking our little GoPro rig we're gonna set it up and where we set this GoPro is where the reflective element is going to be. So there's three things to this. We need to take, let's put it right, okay, you want to check the, turn this on. So three things to this. Um, we need to film with this GoPro and we put it sideways, you can see here. I have it sideways because Brian is more tall than he is wide. And I just need to get his full body. So let me see that. Yeah, you know what? We actually let's turn this around. I'm gonna turn this around. We've got shadows, and I don't want the shadow of his body to be cut off. Okay, so we'll come this way. Walk in closer. All right. So at this point, it's hard to see, but you can see how how close he is to the GoPro. And since it's such a wide angle, he's able. To, I'm able to get the whole shot of him right there. So then we hit record on the GoPro, and then I'm going to film film this. Okay, let's do it two more times. Two more times? Yeah. Okay, so now that we've got that all recorded, the next thing we need to do is right here. Where that GoPro is, I need to create a, a still environment map using an app on my iPhone. I'm using the Photosynth app. It's uh, made by Microsoft. I don't think it's available for Android, but it is for iPhone and Windows phones. Um, I think Google has one that'll do the same thing for Android, but I'm not 100% sure. So that's something to look into. But what it is is you just stand, you stand where the GoPro was. And you turn around in circles and you take pictures from every angle and then um, it creates a sphere uh, equal rectangle uh, map and then I can take that in to After Effects and be able to paste the video onto it and we'll show you that in a second so I'm gonna take the picture and then next time you'll see me is in After Effects okay so after you get all the footage um, again that's two sets of footage plus the environment map um, of the area let me show you how to stick it all together. So I'm going to create a new project and I might just be copying some, pasting some of this over so I don't have to redo some of the cleanup and the rotoscoping and things like that. So here is my footage. I've got, this is my environment map created with the iPhone and the Photosynth um, project. Here is my GoPro footage and you remember I shot it sideways so I can get more of the body because Brian is definitely taller than he is wide. And then here is my footage. And you can see here we've got this tripod or this light stand and this really nice way of mounting the GoPro because I couldn't find my case at the time. So this is what I need to clean up. So let me first start by um, creating a composition. So I'm going to just drag this and drop it right into a composition. Now I'm not going to go through all of the effort I did of cleaning up and rotoing out, um, but let me just copy and paste that into this and I'll show you what I did. Okay, so here is the cleanup layer and the roto layer. So if I solo the roto layer, you can see I just used the roto brush to get a a rough shot of Brian poking with his finger. It's not the best, 
but it's really not that bad. And I would spend more time on it if this was going into a final shot. And then the cleanup layer, let me just go into that. What I have here is this main footage. Then I duplicated the layer. And I just added a quick mask and did a couple of animation points to it. You see I'm moving the mask around and just kind of animating it a little bit. And then I positioned it right on top of the stand that's there. And if you look at it, you can see it's really not that great. Um, but it does the job because when you're watching this, you're not paying attention to the road behind it. You're paying attention to the mirrored ball. So then both of them together, because at this point the elbow was being covered up um, by the new road on the cleanup plate, especially right here. And that's why I need the roto. The roto, what also it does is it allows me to put my arm on top of the element 3D layer that we'll um, have in here. So let's create the element 3D layer now. So I'm going to grab a new solid call it element 3D. And to this, let's add our element 3D effect. I'm going to go into the scene setup. Now I'm using version 2. So I might have some different options than you do. But what I do want to do um, is I'm not going to use the new physical environment. I am going to use the old um, Chrome from the version 1. So you can use this in version 1. Next, I'm going to just hide this, is I'm going to take this movie layer, the one that I brought in here, and I'm going to do a motion track on it to find the camera, or the 3D camera tracker. Now you need to track this before you put in this cleanup plate, because it's not going to track it properly, because you can see it's not moving quite the way it needs to, and it'll confuse the program. So either just turn off that layer, or track it beforehand. So let's go in, track the camera, and it'll analyze it and then um, solve for camera. Okay, that track is all done. And why I'm doing a camera tracker is because I need to add a, a tracking point right where that GoPro is. So I'm going to find that little first tracking point, right click, create null and camera. And at this point, I don't need to have that track anymore. And you can see that's stuck on there pretty good. Now let's go to element 3D, go into the group, and I'm going to create a group null. Select that group null, hit P, select that tracking null, hit P, and I'm going to copy the position from the tracking null into the group null. And you can see it pops up there. Let's scale that up. And there we have that element should be locked into the right place. Now we need to put this element 3D layer in between the roto layer and the background layer so that the finger will pop up over top of it. Okay, now let's create the environment map that we're going to use to reflect onto this mirrored ball. So let's bring in the equirectangular map that we created using the Photosynth. Now again, if you don't have an iPhone, Photosynth is available for the Windows Phone, and I believe Google has one that's available for the Android Phone. I'm just not 100% sure of the name of it, but something that creates kind of a, a photosphere or something like that will probably do the trick. Now, this is a lot bigger than my composition, so I'm going to pre-compose this and then leave all the attributes, so don't move them, and call this Map. Then let's go into the Map layer. And what I'm going to do is let's take my GoPro footage, bring it in here. Now I've already previously synced this up so it's the right length so that my GoPro footage and my main footage is starting and stopping at the right time. Now I do have one little problem is I actually filmed both of these at different frame rates. So the GoPro is in 24 frames a second and the iPhone footage is in 30 frames a second. So if I switch this over to 23.97 and then let's go back into my main composition and let's switch this over to that same frame rate then that should help things out 
I'd rather be dropping frames than repeating frames with something like this. What I should have done is made sure I framed them, uh, filmed them in the same frame rate. Okay, but let's go back into this. Now, one thing that you'll notice is um, if I take this, rotate it 90 degrees, this is over here is where it goes. And so I made this equirectangular environment map wrong. I should have been starting facing the other direction. Um, but that's easy to fix. If we take that layer, that map layer, go down to distort, and then to offset. And what we can do is we can offset this whole picture and just set that first position to 0. So 0 and then 960. And then now we can place this right where it belongs. Now the GoPros are pretty fish-eyed and so it kind of it fits in there pretty well. But if you want it to look a lot better, then what you can use is another program called Skybox. And this is a plugin by Metal. And what Skybox does is it turns these environment maps into different types of environment maps. So let's take this environment map. Let's add the Metal plugin called Skybox. And you can see here, cube map to cube map. Uh, but the input is not a cube map. It's an equirectangular. And then it turns that into a cube map. I'm going to take both these layers, pre-compose it. And then in here, let's, you can see how that's a lot more flat and straight, like normal footage. And let's kind of scale this up and fit it where it needs to, about right there, something like that. Um, I'm going to go in and crop this out later. But let's go back to our map here. And then to this, let's add that skybox converter again. But this time we're going input cube map and then output back to equirectangular. And you can see um, what that does. Now, if I wanted to um, preserve some of the resolution, I'm going to take this, just cut out the background, go back into this map layer, and then paste it in here, but removing, removing that filter. And there we go. But I'm going to leave it in here just while I kind of line things out. You can see that these trees are kind of shorter than these other ones, so let's scale this up a little bit. And I think I need to actually distort it a little bit like that. Try to get it as best you can. Now you can see I'm walking in the background, so I'm going to need to rotoscope myself out. I'm going to just do a rough, very rough mask around this. And then let's animate this mask so it fits. So go down to the mask settings, go to the mask path, move forward, and then about right there, you can see Brian's armor is about to move out. And you see how rough I'm getting with this? Not at all precise, but it's just going to be a reflection, so it doesn't really matter too much. I just want to try to get most of me out of there. And now let's feather that. Try to blend it as best as we can. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now let's go back into our map layer. Make sure we turn off that background. And let's try to color correct this. So let's add a new adjustment layer. And then let's go to color correction curves and let's just bring the whole thing a little bit darker and more saturated. I might have to add some curves to just the background by itself. Okay, I'm trying to make that road match. So it needs a little bit of um, yellow to it. Okay, now the road matches, but the rest of the sky doesn't because I added this curves to this bottom layer. But what I can do is let's go in, create a mask, just a rough one, right around where the road is. And then go into the effects on that layer, go into the curves, and under compositing options, hit plus, and it's only going to use that mask. 
and let's feather that mask. So now we've just added color correction just to the road and now everything matches a lot better. Okay, let's go ahead and take that environment map down to the bottom so we're back to this normal layer with the Element 3D sphere. Let's go to our Element 3D layer, go into the custom layers and under custom texture map, let's grab that map layer. Let's go back into the scene under environment, we're going to now switch this to that custom layer. Click OK. Now what I want to do is go into the reflection settings. And what I want to do is this Fresnel. I want to kind of just darken the edges a little bit. Just a tiny bit. and increase the segments so it's a higher quality. Let's go up to about 16, should be fine. Okay, it's a good start, except for one thing that we noticed is, of course, it's facing the wrong direction. So let's come into the render settings, physical environment, and let's rotate the environment until things are right. And the best way to kind of line things up is to the point where Brian is poking the metal ball. Okay, find the spot where he pokes it. Go grab the group null and just move so it lines up. You might have to rotate the environment as well to get to line up uh, more properly. Okay, now to add the little ripple to it, it's really simple. I'm going to go into the environment map and at the point in which well, Brian's finger is right there the biggest, Let's go in, add an adjustment layer. To this, we're going to add a distort ripple. Let's increase the radius. Um, let's increase the width and the height. Let's grab that center, stick it right on the tip of the finger. Let's bring the wave speed up to about 5. And what I'm going to do is grab my circle mask and make a perfect circle just by holding down shift and make it slightly larger than the finger. We can turn that ripple back on and you can see how it's just going to ripple right there. But what I want to do is come down to the mask, feather it a bit, and then Let's keyframe the expansion. At the same time, let's keyframe the wave width. And make it go really wide. And then the height about halfway through to the end, we want that down to zero. And if you want to add things like little rings, um, same thing as adding the ripples or having the ball move around like that, it's just moving the position of that group null. So that really is all to the tutorial. I did this one a little bit differently because, you know, it's a long, uh, drawn-out process. It's not something you can just go step by step. So if you do have any questions, feel free to ask because this might be one of those things that you do have questions on. The key things to remember is you do, you do need to get the footage. So, again, I used a GoPro to record the footage that is the reflection. I use just my iPhone or you can use any camera to record the normal footage and then just putting it all together with a camera tracker, um, creating the environment map with the Photosynth app or just any Photosphere app that you can find that will create equirectangular um, environment maps and um, put it all together. It's really just kind of a lot of work and um, fiddling around to get everything to work. So again, if you have questions, put them down in the comments below. Hopefully this was helpful to you and Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.